It's time to hit the road and discover Texas with Annie Studebaker. Get ready to travel deep into the heart of the Lone Star State, meeting friendly folks and exploring fascinating places. Experience a way of life like nowhere else in the world. As we uncover the rich history and culture of Texas, discover adventure, discover excitement, discover Texas with Annie Studebaker. In the land of South Texas, there's a wonderful hidden gem known as Luling. Here among the cactus and cattle is the Slade Saddle Shop, the pride and joy of Will Slade Parado. In this episode of Discover Texas, we will see artistic craftsmanship at its best as Slade plies his trade before our very eyes. Known for quality work in leather tooling, Slade Saddle Shop offers leather goods handmade from scratch that can be personalized to be one of a kind. Slade will give us a tour of his facility and demonstrate the art of leather tooling. So let's get started and discover Texas together. My name is Will Parado. Uh, I'm a grandson of Will A. Slade. My mother was a Slade. Uh, Mrs. Slade ran a boarding house across the street from the Baylor campus and my daddy played football for Baylor and lived with the end of Slade boarding house and the rest is history, I guess. But the business was established in Uvalde, Texas in 1883 by a man by the name of A.M. Rice. My grandfather learned his trade in Waco, Texas at Paget Brothers Leather Goods and Saddle Shop, and his father was the foreman of the saddle making division there. And at one time, Paget Brothers was the largest harness and saddle manufacturer in the world during the First World War. Uh, they had a contract with the U.S. government for harness and saddlery. Uh, and George C. Slade, my great-great-grandfather, uh, was very much involved in that operation, and his son, Will A. Slade, learned his trade there. And then in 1929, he and his wife and daughter and two sons uh, moved to Uvalde, Texas, and he purchased A.M. Rice Saddle Shop. And it's been in continuous operation since 1883. The shop was right on the square in Uvalde, and we did business with some famous name ranches, the Chaparosa Ranch, uh, which was the King Ranch branch uh, down south of us. And, UK Cattle Company and many uh, operations in that part of the country. And I guess that's when the shop was as its largest. Uh, right after the Second World War, my father managed it. And uh, later in the 80s, I managed it. And then uh, to shorten the story, in 1986, I went into full-time ministry with Christian Church's Disciples of Christ. We sold the shop to a fellow by the name of Taylor. He kept the shop in Uvalde. Bottom line, he kept it for about three years and quit paying for it. So we went back into the saddle shop business on a part-time basis. And then when I retired from the church and the son and I have been doing it here since, oh gosh, uh, the late uh, mid-90s, part-time. And then when I retired from the church, we went full-time. And he uh, quit his job, and we're doing this now full-time. He's a saddle maker. I'm a saddle maker. He does the fancy stuff and because it's a natural talent with him and he's uh, rather well known 
for that ability. I can do some tooling, but not in his category. We make a good combination. And that makes, basically, I'm fourth generation, he's fifth generation, and his daughter, uh, Sydney, is sixth generation. She does a lot of the saddle repair here. And then Marion, we couldn't do without Marion. She uh, handles virtually all of our wholesale business to uh, Cavendish Boot Cities which are the knife scabbard uh, various styles. Uh, Marion uh, cuts them out, stamps them, sews them. We all work well together and each one has their own specialty and, and we really enjoy it. Hold on to your hat, we'll be right back. My name is Will Slade Paradox. I go by Slade. Everybody knows me as Slade. I am partnerships with my daddy in the business and I basically oversee all the production and I do all the custom leather goods, uh, all the hand tooling, the personalization. I do make saddles, but my dad, you know, enjoys making the saddles, so if there's any tooling or any artistry part side of it, then uh, I'll do that on the saddle. But basically what I do is uh, make sure all the orders are getting filled, make sure the custom stuff is to the person's satisfaction when they pick it up. So that's what I do. When I was young, I enjoyed doing art. And so I just kind of started running around getting in my dad's way at seven. And I would sweep the floor and, you know, help out mess around the shop and probably when I was about 10 or 11 I started grabbing some pieces of leather and just kind of started messing with it and uh, my dad realized that I actually had the artistic ability that my great-grandfather had so I really got involved in the tooling side of it and you know making little stuff little wallets little stuff for people and uh, been doing it ever since. Been off and on in other jobs, but I've always come back to the shop because it's always brought me back to the shop. It's a dying trade. Not a whole lot of people learning it. They don't teach it in schools anymore. Currently, I have contracts with Cavender's Boot City. Uh, we do a lot with Cavender's. Actually, Clay Cavender, I met with him uh, probably about seven, eight months ago, and he asked me to put this laid stamp on all his uh, knife sheets because he said man you, your history is fascinating and he said I don't want made in the USA I want made in Texas Luling Texas slates and he was really excited that I was allowing him to do that so but yet it helps me in my business and so that was a that was a neat thing and I do we do some wholesale products for some other uh, companies but Cavenders is my business. They've got biggest. They have 96 stores, I think. And so they keep us pretty busy. My daughter does the saddle repair. You know, that's a big part of our business too, is saddle repair. We have people coming in from all over getting us to do saddle repair because we do, we do such a good job, I guess. We, you know, we get a lot of referrals from the saddle repair. And there's not a whole lot of people doing it anymore. You know, you have your saddle makers in uh, Yoakum, which is your Double J, your Circle Y, your Tex-10, some of those big manufacturers, but they won't do repairs because they're, I don't know if they're too busy doing their own production, but because of that, we do a lot of repairs a lot of saddle repairs and tack repair, you know, leather. We'll do handbags, purses, you know, repair and stuff like that. We do a lot of holsters too. We do a lot of gun holsters. Holsters are real big because of the concealed handgun came to open carry now. So we've been doing a lot of uh, 
holsters. People want, you know, a real fancy holster and gun belt, so. But we've always done that. I mean, that's been the history of the shop. You know, back in the day, that's all the guys had were saddles and holsters and gun belts and rifle scabbards, so. And back in the day when we were in Uvalde, my main, my dad's main focus was cater to the working cowboy. You know, no frills, no bling bling, just good, heavy, hardworking tack and saddles and shaps and you know, these guys that go out and work, they they got to have a good good saddle gonna last them a long time. And so that's basically what the shop was based on from day one in 1883. So and we haven't changed that today. A lot of the saddles that we make today are ranch working saddles. There's still cowboys out there working cattle. There's a bunch of what they call day workers. They they go from ranch to ranch to ranch and round up their cattle, put them in a chute, work them and brand them and go to the next ranch. And so we still do a lot of that for the working cowboys. Well, Sydney, I hear that you are the repair person. I am. Tell me what you do here. Okay, so when a saddle comes in, um, we always want to make sure to, you know, uh, make sure all the pieces stay together. So the first thing I do is I grab those color ribbons right there. Okay. And I'll tag the saddle so it's color coded. So, and all the pieces that come with the saddle, I'll make sure to, you know, put on so we don't lose pieces because we have so many saddle repairs that we have to do. And then I'll start by unscrewing the conchos because this saddle, as you can, you know, see, has no lining. So what we're going to do hmm. is we're going to take all these conchos off and then take the keepers off and everything. So this will fold back oh, and wow. then eventually we'll be able to take the back housing off. And then um, after that, there's nails that are holding the skirts on. So we can eventually take those off and then we'll get to where we can put new lining on it. And then we'll just like, so it's like riding a bike. Like once you take a saddle apart, it's pretty easy to put back together. Oh yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I'll take the fenders and look at them and make sure like nothing's rotten or ripped. Cause if sometimes like you can patch if it's ripped, so we don't have to like replace the whole fender. And then these stirrup leathers, we always want to make sure that they're also not ripped because if you're riding a horse and they decide to break, that's dangerous. That's not a good thing. So, what is this material right that now? That is rawhide. So like to wow. put rawhide on the cannel, um, you want to soak it and then you want to shave it. But yeah, that's some pretty tough stuff. And also right here. And y'all fix that too? Um, yeah, we can. Yeah. We can really do anything. You make <laughs> it look brand new. <laughs> yeah. Wow, this is amazing. Yeah. So this and is I, great. You know, I like doing it. So You like doing it. Yeah. Good deal. Hold on to your hat, we'll be right back. Okay, Marianne, you're supposed to teach me to do something here. What is it? Okay, so we are going to finish up these rodeo shafts. Oh, and these are beautiful, though. Yes. Good grief. What we need to do is put these buckles right here. Do you see where I have marked? Oh, yes, I do. I see it right here. Okay, so what you're going to do, you're going to take at your hole. Oh. Okay. All right, let's see how good I am. Not hard enough. Go ahead and do it again. Okay, lift it up. All right, okay. All right. Go I'm good now. I can punch holes. You check it. That didn't go through. That was terrible. Too big? No, it's perfect. I want to do it. I can't do it like you do. So now we're going to take the actual buckles and put on here. And what we use are these little speedy rivets. Okay. Speedy rivets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh. So we line up our holes. And you get a little cap. 
and hammer and it, it down. Snaps. Except this time you use this hammer. Just hammer it flat. Let me okay. show you. Yes, please. And that's secure? Mm -hmm. Well, that's let me secure. do one here, okay. Mm -hmm. So line up your holes with your mm -hmm. little speed I ribbon. see it. And the first one goes in the bottom. Make sure it goes all the way through. There you go. Oh, this is the hard, you gave me the hard one. No, no I'm just kidding. <laughs> this and it one. it should snap down. It did. Okay. Just watch your fingers. Yes. Okay. You did it six times. I counted. How about that? Uh-oh. There you go. Good I'm measure. learning, though. That's good. And what, let me show you what these are going to do. So what they're going to do, once it's all complete, we don't have the other ones on yet, but we would have the billets on this side and they lace through and it goes around your leg. Oh, I see. So that's how they go like that's, this, yes. right? Yes. How nice. And these are for? These are for a rodeo drill team. A rodeo out drill. Out of Kennedy, team. right, Slade? Yeah. Out of Kennedy. Oh, out of Kennedy. These are very nice, excellent work, quality, very nice. I commend you, very nice. Okay, so you cut little, made little cuts there so it'll turn. Yeah, because I'm doing a left-handed and so I have, I have a, on the, on my front side, right-handed, I have the pattern where I want to put my stitch mark. Oh, okay. But when I flip it over, I can't see it. So I put those notches in there. So I have a reference for my stitch mark, stitch mark on this side. And what I'll do here in a minute is I'll get my ruler and I'll draw me a line. And that gives me the center of where my basket stamp needs to go. Oh, okay. My symmetrical stamp. These are various tools I use to use when I tool. Uh, of course, a basket stamp is what they call a symmetrical tooling. And what that is, is it doesn't require a whole lot of tools except one or two of these tools over here. So I want to, I have this line here, so I, I want to put my basket stamp in between these two lines because that's where my stitch is going to be. So I don't want to put my stitching on my basket stamp. So it gives me a reference of where I need to put my uh, tooling. Uh, anyway, I'll put a basket stamp and this is the one stamp that I'll use to do the symmetrical. And some people have to draw a line reference, but I don't do that. I just, I've been doing it so long. And then I'll do what they call a sunburst border. It's going to be this tool here. And I just kind of go inside where my stitching is going to be. And it outlines the basket stamp. And then I come in here and just put like a, a finish deal on the, it's called a, a seed or a spot. Anyway, it have the, it have the loops here and here, and then I'll finish it all out and edge it and dye it, and it'll be a basket stamp knife sheet. So you always want your work here, so I'm going to start here. This is a machine that we use for our saddle repair. It's a pretty heavy duty machine. Yes, I could tell by the size of that needle. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a straight needle machine. It's, uh, 
it's it's a it's a pretty simple machine to use. So there's that stitch line that I wow. drew earlier. And the next step I'll do is I'll dye the edge. So what I'll do is I'll put an oil on here. It, it really puts uh, real nice color in the leather. This is beautiful, your, and you did it your belt so to go fast. Right, right through there. Right through there, and this is right handed, like, yeah, you know. Right. Oh, here. wow. This was an amazing experience. The quality and detail of all the handmade leather goods were absolutely beautiful. Remember, if you're looking for that special saddle, wallet, or purse, or whatever it may be, you know that Slade Saddle Shop is the place to go. This is Annie Studebaker. Thanks for taking the time to discover Texas.